Here now is Matt Austin and Ginger Gadsden with Florida's Fourth Estate. Sponsored by Light Orlando, delivering hope together. Today, Florida's Fourth Estate is on the gorgeous campus of Montverde Academy, and we are standing in a basketball court that has housed some real greats. I'm talking <laughs> Joel Embiid. Yeah. Ben Simmons. The greats. There's a whole, there's the a whole wall of them. It's a wall of fame. That's right. And, <laughs> and they also have a lot of national championships here. And it's really become a huge program nationally and maybe internationally here at Montverde Academy. It's very well known and you don't have a machine that runs this way without someone being in charge and without it being taken care of and without it being in very good hands. So we are lucky enough to be joined now by someone who's been here for close to a decade now, I think <laughs> we'll clarify that in just a moment, is Crystal Peary. She is the Director of Athletic Operations here at Montverde Academy. I'm so happy to meet you because when I walked in, I wasn't expecting you, right? So tell me a little bit about what you do here and what that means, because this academy is story. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, it is. It, it's an adventure, I like to say. Um, there is a lot of moving pieces and a lot of moving parts. And, and you said that, you know, I'm kind of leading the ship, but it's, it's a team effort. Sure. Um, and so I, I kind of like to say I'm making sure all of the parts play nice in the sandbox <laughs> and, and everything rolls. Um, you know, it's, it's checking in on games, making sure things are scheduled accordingly, making sure teams have what they need, um, making sure facilities are set um, yeah. on, on any given day. It looks different, um, and that's what that's what's cool about it. I think a lot of people want to know what is the average day <laughs> for a kid or a sport. Not average. <laughs> no, for a non-average <laughs> child who's coming here to Montverde Academy, what does it look like? Because you guys structure things differently than most schools. Yeah. So you know, even within ourselves, we have kind of multiple schedules going on. So you may have the student that's a part of one of our academy programs that you know the school day starts at 7:45. They'll have their full five classes. And then from there, they'll go to lunch and then they'll go into training. And so in training, we'll wrap up at 3.30. And that's a part of their school. That's day. a part of their academic day. So those are the academy programs. We have three of those in boys basketball, boys soccer, and then tennis. Um, you may have the varsity athlete that is in class the full day um, and then has practices after school. And then we also have some varsity athletes that may have eight periods and then their ninth period starts their training. Just trying to make sure all those parts play nice in the sandbox, mm -hmm. schedules are varying accordingly. So it really changes up across the board. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I said you had been here for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Tell me exactly how long you've been in the capacity in which you serve right now and what that entails because when you walk into one of the gymnasiums like this one and you see the names that mm -hmm. are up there, what kind of pressure is that? <laughs> we are always striving for excellence. So to answer your question, I've been here six years as the athlete athletic director going into my seventh next year and it's always trying to top what we did last year. I think I was just talking to my team about okay guys we're on track. Um, we've already beaten our record for championships from last year and we still have some more to go so we're excited about that but it is just continue to elevate and that's that's why we've had the excellence that we've had is because all of the coaches are chasing something. They're never complacent. And, and that can be a good thing. <laughs> and that can be a rough thing yeah, at times, yeah. you know, but, but that's what makes us us, is that we're just always pushing to be better and get more. You know, Coach Boyle, who's had all the national championships, he's not, he's not done. You know, he, he's ready for more. He's ready to, to see what he can do next year. How many teams, how many wins can he finish the season with? Um, how many kids can he have go on to D1s? Um, so how many kids can be highly ranked? Yeah. That, you know, that's what all the coaches are constantly thinking about, and it breeds excellence among them. No one's really striving cool. for mediocrity. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Seems like We're not lot, doing that here. A lot of pressure. Oh, it's like how many national championships did <laughs> yeah. we get this year? But how do you... How do you make it so you have so many of these? Because clearly it's not a coincidence. Is it the facilities? Is it the training staff? <laughs> What do you think is the secret sauce that makes it to where you have an entire wall of NBA players? Yeah, it's the people. It, it's the people that we bring on staff who have the have, who have been there and done that. So they themselves have gone and done some amazing things in their life and understand the experience. They have the network. So you know, if you're talking about a kid that wants to go to a Division One college, does that coach have that that network to say, hey, pick up the phone and say, hey, I got this really great kid. Um, you know, it is just being able to build relationships and pull excellence out, out of the kids. 
um, and really meet them. You know, you may have a really great kid that has some challenges. How do you connect with them and pull greatness out of them? So when I'm hiring, when I'm looking at bringing in somebody, it's it's a full picture um, and there's a lot to evaluate. It's not just the coach that has had success somewhere else. Um, what's your backstory? Who do you know? How can you be pivotal here? Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's what it is. Yes, we have great facilities that does not um, <laughs> make it more challenging. It's, it's, you know, it definitely helps, but it's the people. Um, and it is the fact that when you go to our academics, you're gonna meet some really great people over there too. And you're gonna meet a kid that from Zambia um, or a kid from Brazil or a kid from Japan. Um, it's those interactions. It's those experiences. I know I didn't get that type of diversity until yeah. I got to college. So to come here and, and see it and then be in our dorms and experience that life. It's really about preparing them. So you come here as a boarder. You're living in the dorms. You're eating in the dining hall. You're on campus a lot. You're you have a strict schedule. Um, that's the college experience. Yeah, yeah, it's like its own little country, mm -hmm. you know, just with a lot of flavor just yep. sprinkled throughout. And I, I was serious when I said I walked through these doors. I had read a lot about because I had not heard of Montbird until just a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I didn't know what a big deal it really is mm -hmm. in this community, right? Not just this community. But then I walk through the door and then I see you as the person mm -hmm. who we're talking to mm -hmm. and your title, mm -hmm. right? So tell me a little bit about that journey because I know you live in it all day long. <laughs> yes. It, it is a nice unexpected surprise Thank you. for me to see you in that capacity. So I would imagine that some of the other kids who walk through and may not have seen one or experienced someone yeah. like you before, that has to make them feel a different kind of way. Yeah, I mean, it, it to me, it, it shows that we practice what we preach and that we do value diversity. And you know, in all of our different roles, you'll see people that look differently and believe differently and act differently. Um, it just speaks to who we are. Um, it is certainly, I think your experience is not rare. You know, I've had people, I've been in this role maybe, what, four years and someone might say, oh, congratulations, you know? <laughs> Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I hope I wasn't that bad. No, 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 no. You're getting there. No, no, no. no, no. But it, it shows you that, you know, people that look like me are not typically in this position. Yeah. And I think that we do have more females, more people of color stepping into these roles. So I'm always kind of just trying to empower. If I see another woman AD, I'm like, hey, girl, how you yes. doing? And making that connection um, because there is there's not a lot of us, um, but they're out there and it's growing. So I, love that. I, th I think a lot of people watching this have a few things popping into their head. They're wondering, you said boarding school. So mm -hmm. this is partially boarding school, partially day yep. school. So that's something to talk about. But a lot of people who have a kid who's a good at sports, I'm sure call you all the time and say, <laughs> what kind of scholarship will you give my basketball or soccer player? My kid's player? the next big thing. Yep. And yep. you have to tell them, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So, you know, we, we do get that quite a bit. Um, and it's always, it's really exciting to see that kids want to be here and want to be a part of what we're doing. Um, but we constantly have to share that as a part of the Florida High School Athletic Association, um, we have certain protocols that we have to follow. So we do not offer scholarships. We do not offer just because you're the, the next best thing, you can come on in. We do have a whole admissions process that we follow. And so we offer need-based financial aid, which is part of that process. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to apply. You have to go through our enrollment management office. Um, and and submit a number of documents to make sure that you're eligible for that. So sure. we certainly have students here who, you know, maybe necessarily couldn't afford to come, but through the need-based financial aid have had that opportunity yeah. and it, it makes us a better institution for it. Okay, and I just have to say, we're in a beautiful facility right now, but let's talk about what's outside. Mm -hmm. Because just the drive over here, if I were here K through 12, there is no incentive for me to leave. <laughs> That's what I we want, hope. That's I want to live the rest of my, I mean, even after I'm an adult, oh. I want to just stay here on campus. Is it, I know you're from California. Yes. And you said when you first came here, you stumbled upon this place. Yeah. Like, where am I? How is it that, you know, you, you get to come here every day and work in this beautiful town? Yeah, you know, it was a number of years ago. I, I Again, I can't remember how I ended up here, but I was driving through, probably very lost, and I just found myself and was like, oh, 
is this a college? Is this a, what am I looking <laughs> at like here? <laughs> you know, and it just made me want to go learn more about yeah. it. Um, and every day we have to remind ourselves just how fortunate we are. I mean, to have four gyms, to have five soccer fields, a beach volleyball court, a pool, we're just very grateful and thankful. Um, and, and that's the really exciting thing about us is that we're not done. You know, we, we <laughs> want to keep adding to offering more for our kids because, you know, everybody's elevating. And so we want to keep elevating as well. So we have, you know, discussions of adding another facility that's going to support all of our programs and, and just trying to offer as much as we can that's mm -hmm. going to meet the needs. So if we have a gap in something, Okay, how do we fill it? How do, where can we add on? And we get creative. We, oh my gosh, how does your brain even sleep? Whew, you know, well, actually, because I, I can be exhausted at times um, after the day um, and all the different things that happen, but, but yeah. So, yeah. So you said that everybody's elevating, but really, if people compare you to somebody, it's always IMG, which is also in this state. Mm -hmm. I'm curious as to what you guys think of those comparisons when it comes up. You know, um, obviously they are a great athletic talent and, you know, we respect what they have done on the field and on the court. Um, you cannot deny that. I think where we look at ourselves as a little bit differently is that we just are just not just trying to be great athletically. Um, we want to pursue the academics and be the highest level there, the arts. Um, you know, the robotics, EA sports, we are trying to continue to elevate in all areas and support our kids um, as best we can with whatever they want to do. It's not just an athletic school for us. We, you know, we want to be identified as an institution that offers everything across the board. And so we certainly love the healthy competition that we have between us and IMG. Mm -hmm. um, it makes for some really great games, but but I think that's where beyond that, I don't know, I can't speak too much about how their programs are set up and whatnot, but we just want to elevate across the board and be great. Yeah, I love that because you're teaching the whole student because if everyone's a great athlete and goes on to the professional leagues, who's taking care of the planet? Who's, you know, mm -hmm. taking care of the, the world, right? Mm -hmm. So we need leaders. Mm -hmm. And that's what you guys are really vested in as well, is making sure that students are well-rounded. And you know something about that too, because you're a track and field person, right? Yeah. And you had to pivot. Mm -hmm. So does that inform how you do Certainly. your job here? Certainly, you know, obviously in high school, I was very fortunate to, to have a couple of wins in, in my books and um, thought, I was going on to the Olympics as all track athletes do. That was where my mind was at. And, you know, I was on that road. I got a college scholarship, went to Texas A&M University and had success there. And then an injury, um, mm -hmm. a very big injury. And that kind of, you know, forced me to, to shift. And I had to evaluate, okay, where are my skills? What else can I do? What do I love? What are my passions? And it, thankfully, you know, I had the pe people in my corner that helped guide me. Um, to find out my passion and what I enjoy and what I'm good at. Um, but it certainly was a team effort. And so having people that poured into me beyond just my sport yeah. was amazing. Had people, having people that believed in me beyond just being a runner um, was, was really helpful. And I had a mentor in college that said, hey, I think you'd be really good in educational administration. And I said, yeah, I think I'd like that. And so that's where for us, that's what I keep in the back of my mind. Even when I talk to parents, I say, yeah, I hope we can make your kid a great athlete, but I hope we can make them a great person. I hope we can mm. give them the tools they need if they want to be an investment banker or a doctor or a realtor, whatever it is. I hope that they look back on this experience yeah. and say, Montverde Academy helped get me to where I am, even if it has nothing to do with sport. Wow. With, with this being a boarding school, I would imagine you're kind of like a parent because <laughs> their parents yeah. aren't here. Yeah. You're here. Mm -hmm. Do you find that you're stepping into that role or do you have people here built in? I don't know if it's yeah. coaches or extra staff. It's who, a team effort. Can you so, ground these kids? How does that work? <laughs> no, these are great questions. So I see why you do what you do. Um, so we, we actually have dorm parents on campus. So okay. the kids go back and they're, when they go back to their dorms, there is somebody there that's, you know, on their hall. You know, they build relationships with them. They do birthday parties and all the things oh. with them yeah. um, to make them feel at home because some of these kids are coming here pretty young, you know, as middle school. Mm -hmm. And so 
I know I would have a tough time coming across to another country um, and living with a bunch of people I don't know. Yeah. So they definitely have to make it a very home experience yeah. for them, but it's a group effort. You know, my coaches might say, yeah, I'm second mom, you know, because mm -hmm. they've, they've got to make sure that beyond just being in the dorms and in a bed, that they're really enjoying their experience. And, you know, Parents are quick to want to talk to coach and say, hey, what's going on with this? What's that? So it's everybody pitching in across the board from our dining hall staff. You know, our security gets to know wow. the students. Yeah. It's just really a community. Okay, so these dorm parents, they're like resident advisors, but they're life advisors, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah they, they really build a connection with these kids, which, uh, you know, and kind of they'll take them in and say, I have, you know, 25 kids, really. <laughs> um, and. and it's just amazing to see because the kids get, they light up. Our dorm parents will come to the games and our kids will oh see them gosh. and they'll be like, hey, Miss Kathy, hey, Miss so Mr. So-and-so. And they just really enjoy having them there. Um, and it, it really is a family. I That's think fantastic. I found my retirement job. Right? Oh my dorm gosh. Dad. Hey, I want to dorm ground, dad. Can I ground Scotty Barnes? That'd be fun. Uh, uh, thank Crystal you so Puri, much. Crystal you've been Same. a delight. Well, thank, thank you, you for, having for, for having us here at your beautiful facility. We appreciate oh, you. Thank you for coming to us. And thank you for watching Florida's Fourth Estate. You can download it from wherever you listen to podcasts or watch anytime on News 6 Plus.